morning pickles it is EYF ah! well it's it's not quite EYF it's currently Wednesday the 20th but today is the day that I'm heading to Edinburgh in order for EYF to start tomorrow and I am tremendously tremendously excited I am also in my very typical fashion running slightly behind optimal time not not late I hesitate to say late it's a very strong word but um it does mean that I'm gonna get a little bit of a shuffle on so I will take you you'll be able to see a little bit of how I'm getting there a little bit of the journey itself and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the other side bye Well hello again Pickles, I am here and the reason it is echoey is because as with all gorgeous old flats in Edinburgh, ceilings are very high, the rooms are very echoey, but here we go. This is going to be our little pad for the week. Um, I will do a proper tour and show you around a little bit later on, but um, yeah, we're just in the door. There was a tiny kerfuffle with keys, but it's fine, we're all good. It does mean that I'm now one gin and tonic to the good, so uh, <laughs> if in doubt, always go for the booze but um, yeah I will give you a little bit of a tour later on but um, I just wanted to check in and say hi and um, yeah Edinburgh fun times so one thing I am very excited about with this apartment is actually where it is and obviously I'm from Edinburgh this is my hometown but there's something to be said for living right in the very heart of the city and funnily enough when I was growing up here I did not do that I lived in a beautiful part of the city, more towards the south side, but now part of the delight of staying here this time is we get to choose where we stay and so um, the good news is we're on possibly my favourite street in the whole of Edinburgh and um, if you've been to this city you might just know which one it is. I'm very excited! it's here it's EYF day one it is Thursday the 21st of March and um, I'm getting ready to head off to EYF this morning I am wearing the customary knitwear uh, this is my no frills sweater it is knit out of woolen vine yarns and I get to see Kristen slightly later on and so I'm wearing it partly in her honor and partly because this in this weather means I can go out without a coat and if you're Scottish or indeed know people who are you'll know that that is a truly momentous occasion so um yes I will take you along with me this morning I'll show you a little bit of the festival itself and um, you'll see a bit more over the next few days but I'm so excited I hope you are well. It is a little bit of a quieter and more subdued dungeon it that you're seeing at the moment. I am back at the end of a long and truly wonderful day. I filmed a few bits and pieces of footage. I will be peppering footage of the various stands and vendors and all of the incredible things that EYF has to offer throughout this vlog. But um, yeah, today was 
wonderful. It was the first day of the festival, so a little bit of kind of general scouting and um, kind of first lap was done today, so not a huge amount of kind of crazy purchasing, at least on my own behalf. But I did get the opportunity to say hello to some of the most wonderful, fabulous individuals. Some podcast viewers, which is always amazing, and um, trust me and believe me when I say the novelty of this has not worn off at all yet. I am delighted that there are people out there who enjoy watching um, this general hot mess, and uh, today it has been quite literally a bit of a hot mess. The um, the no frills mohair sweater, that was a commitment. Um, anyone who stepped foot in the venue today will tell you it was fairly toasty warm. And um, a lot of people who'd brought knitwear with them to wear were sort of gradually stripping it off. Um, I had to persevere a little bit, not least because the um, undergarments underneath this are not necessarily for um, a whole wide sort of general public consumption. So consumption is not the right word to be using here. Um, <laughs> they're not intended for public display. Let's go with that. Consumption? Yeah, no. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I had to stick with this for a little bit and it got a little bit toasty at points, but we're fine. We lived to tell the tale. But I had a fabulous time catching up with folk um, and, and making a few cheeky purchases. The majority of the purchases that I made today were on behalf of friends who weren't able to attend in person or indeed a couple of gifts. I did pick up one skein that is going to go towards our EYF, Vicarious EYF giveaway, and I will show you that a little bit later on. But I did, towards the end of the day, entirely and completely not my fault, I did end up making a cheeky purchase. And um, you may not be too surprised when I show you exactly what it is. Um, so, I was wandering around the stands today and I thought I don't necessarily have anything that's particularly in mind as to something that I know I definitely must or want to purchase. I do know that I want to purchase yarn for the uh, Fakuro pullover that I mentioned on episode 19 of the podcast and I've got some ideas about what that might be but um, there was nothing else that I was particularly, you know, kind of front of mind that I needed to buy for, that I wanted to buy for, so I thought I would just let my spirit be guided by whatever fabulous pretties came my way. And sure enough, I was wandering past one stand and had like a full-on breath catching in my throat moment because I was so captured by how beautiful this yarn is. Um, I mean, we're past the point of this being funny now. <laughs> there are genuinely no prizes for guessing this because beyond fucking predictable, right? But um, Ushatita, who is a fabulous dyer, um, they recently fostered a couple of little baby squirrels. And if you go into their Instagram feed and look at their highlights, you will see highlights of the squirrel kids. And um, it would appear that they have paid homage to those beautiful little creatures in yarn form. And um, I mean, I mean, come on now. The lighting in here is not brilliant. It's the end of the day. I've got a big light on uh, here in the flat, but this is, it's coming out a little bit more kind of mahogany here on the screen than it is in person. I will show you it in proper lighting later, but um, I think coppery gold is probably the best way of defining this. It is absolutely stunning. The depth of this color is not being done justice by the lighting, but I popped back over at the stand towards the end of the day. I just, I couldn't get this colour out of my mind. And so, um, yeah, I do have four skeins of this. I've got an idea as to what it might be. I will share that with you later. But in the meantime, I think I am going to sign off for just now. There is a chance that I'm going to be heading out later on today. Um, I know the knit night's on tonight, as I mentioned. I don't have tickets for that. I might be meeting up with a couple of friends. I'm not totally sure. I also think I might be sorely tempted to have a bit of a quiet one, try and crank out this bloody sleeve on my Zweig. So for a progress update, just so we're clear, this is where I'm at with my Zweig sleeve at the moment. This is still sleeve one. So we're under the cosh a little bit, to be honest. So um, we, need to, we need to pull our fingers out and get moving on this. So that might be the order of the day. But um, yeah, I have had a wonderful first day to everyone that came up and said hi. Um, I, 
I want to be able to say thank you to each and every one of you individually. The problem that I have is it's so difficult to have enough presence of mind when I'm so excited to meet you to ask you names, to make notes of them, and so I'm genuinely very sorry. I do not remember all of your names, and therefore I feel terrible calling any one of you out. But if you did come up, if you did say hi, if you got a hug, which I'm pretty sure is everyone, um, if I missed you, I am desperately sorry about that. We'll rectify that next time round. But um, yeah, I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you had wonderful days, and um, I look forward to a little bit more of the craziness continuing tomorrow. So, that being said, I'm going to leave you for this evening, and um, I will pick up with you again for day two. Bye! I hope you are well. It is day two of EYF and uh, here we are in the centre of town. We're on Victoria Street which is the inspiration for Diagon Alley allegedly. But um, I'm here and I might have found a fellow podcaster. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> this is Kristen of The Lundbein of course as you well know. Um, we've just had some breakfast. We're about to embark on a little bit more coffee because coffee. Um, at some point I'll be able to See past my hair. <laughs> it is really windy out. I'm regretting not wearing a scarf because I heard it was supposed to be pretty warm today. But yeah. I'm well, this is fine. In, in, when you grow up in Scotland, you get used to eating your own hair on a regular basis just with the wind. But um, yes, we are en route. I have my wristband at the ready and um, yeah, getting excited about day two. Hello there, Pickles. It has been a wonderful day two over at EYF. I have made a little bit of a change this evening because the knitwear, it was getting a little bit toasty warm, but um, I am back now for this evening. I'm in my living room on the sofa and um, I intend to stay here for a large part of this evening. But um, that being said, I am trying to get a little bit of work done on my Zweig. I'm not quite as far today as I would have liked in that, um, I sat down for a good 20 minutes at, I was gonna say lunchtime, but it was like half past two, and um, picked up the stitches for my second sleeve. I bound off the first sleeve last night, very exciting. Picked up the stitches for my second leave, sleeve, knit about half a row, and then got distracted and went back into the marketplace. <laughs> not, not ideal on the old knitting front, but I'm getting there. And um, if all else fails, I might end up 
you know, kind of going in with slightly uneven sleeves tomorrow. We'll see how we go. <laughs> but yeah, so looking forward to having a little bit of a chilled out knitting sort of evening and we'll see how that goes. It is day three of EYF. It's very exciting. Um, this is me just taking a very quick shot before I leave the house. It's a very windy, cold day here in Edinburgh, and so I'm recording what my hair looks now for posterity, because I can guarantee in about 30 seconds after walking outside the door, this will be nothing but a distant memory. But I am gonna be heading into town in a little bit to catch up with a friend of mine for brunch. It is the last full day of the festival itself. There is an event that is on tomorrow, but as I've mentioned, I don't have tickets for that, unfortunately. But that being said, said today is going to be jam-packed enough as it is so um yeah I look forward to taking you along
there, getting there, getting there. Meanwhile, <laughs> nothing like someone who's too tired. <laughs> fatigue, the fatigue is setting in a little bit, but we're gonna get caffeinated, we're gonna get sugar brushed. Coffee. Caffeine. 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 It's, it's a drug, but a truly, truly necessary one at some point. So um, yeah, we're gonna refuel, and then we'll be back to being perky, perky selves. Definitely, perky, perky. It may have aged me four years, <laughs> but this is done. It's done. The ends are woven in. Look, ends, ends that have been woven. It is worn, it is on, it is not blocked, and it looks like a crumpled piece of shit, but it is done, and I'm deliriously happy. You guys, that's it, it's done. Three days at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. It has been such a joy. I hope you can appreciate how madly huge my cheesy grin is right now because I am feeling so full of love, so full of just abject happiness. It has been just the most wonderful time. I'm going to gush about it a little bit more, uh, probably later, but also a little bit tomorrow as well, because the light in here, as you may be able to see, is a little bit shitty, and I don't think it's going to do my purchases justice, so you're going to need to wait a little bit longer to see some of the stash flash in action, but in the meantime, I have finished my Zweig. I am wearing it. I am genuinely delighted with it, and I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who kept me company for the uh, couple of hours this afternoon that I was sitting in the marquee and kind of like half conversing, but also half like focused on needles of fire trying to, trying to finish off this bugger of a sleeve right here. We got there in the end, it did take a while, I did have a good couple of conversations that I was really only half engaged with, so if you were in those and you were in them a little bit more fully than I was. I really apologise. But I got it finished and it is approved. I have uh, had my picture taken with Morag the Cow, uh, the Heal and Coo, as we say up here. And, um, and so with that in mind, this is an official EYF jumper. It didn't seem likely. It didn't even seem fucking possible. And yet, we have achieved it. Throughout this week, I've done a really terrible job of signing off in the evenings, and part of that has been, there's been a little bit of gentle socializing in a couple of the evenings. Part of it has been that after the bit of gentle socializing, all I really wanted to do was just stare at a wall and, and try and like decompress and get myself to a point of being able to sleep after all of the just buzzing hijinks going on in my head. Um, so apologies that I haven't rounded out any of the vlogs particularly well. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's a journey, not a, um, not a destination thing. Platitudes, real pearls of wisdom. Imagine that I've come out with one of those and you're just gonna nod, nod sagely, like yeah, that's, that's what she means. Imagine I have the wherewithal to come out with one of those and uh, let's just all skip on to the end. Hello Pickles, it's future Dunderknit. Ooh, I'm coming at you from the future, except that this is actually the past, because by the time you watch this, it'll be past, but it's not in the same timeline as the Edinburgh, oh crap. Um, <laughs> proof that I shouldn't try and go a bit too, um, a bit too um, meta with my metaphors. Ah, uh, see what I did there? Because I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> I am just popping in from now, where I am, to talk a little bit about the EYF giveaway. It feels like a suitable juncture in this whole thing. Obviously, you've seen the footage from EYF itself, or at least I hope you have. You might have skipped it, who can say? But um, 
the, it was such a fantastic festival and I wanted to round off talking about the festival by sharing a little bit of the goodies that I picked up for our Vicarious EYF giveaway. So as I've mentioned over on the podcast, if for whatever reason you weren't able to attend EYF this year, maybe it's just not on the cards for you, whether it's financial, whether it is just logistics, whether you're not a fan of festivals and therefore experiencing it vicariously is as close as you want to get. I totally appreciate it, but I wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to share a little bit of that EYF joy a little bit further afield. And so over in the Ravelry group, which you can find by heading over to the Ravelry site and searching for the Knitting Vicariously podcast group, over there, there is a thread that has the title of Vicarious EYF or EYFing Vicariously, something to that effect. And um, within there, you can enter by adding a very quick update or as long as you like to say um, what it is that you would love to do on your ideal yarny day. It doesn't have to be festival related if that's not your bag, but just something in there to answer the prompt. And what I'll do is I will use random number generator to choose a post at random. And uh, the winner of that, I'll get in touch and get their details to send some yarny goodies their way. It was meant to be closing today, which is the 7th of April. I have not been able to get my shit together in enough time to be able to post my EYF vlog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend it for another week. So this will run until Sunday the 14th of April. I will update the group accordingly and um, you'll have until then to enter in the thread. I will close it very last thing on Sunday morning, on Sunday night rather, so 11.59pm uh, GMT or in other words probably on Monday morning when I'm on the commute and I remember. So you might have a little bit of extra leeway. But um, yeah, just so you're aware, you'll have a little bit more time to do that because I want to be sure that I'm sharing your goodies with you and you've got a chance to see what you could be in with a chance of winning. So first things first, and I'll rattle through these a little bit, is this fabulous La Bien Aimee bag. La Bien Aimee is obviously one of the most incredible yarn dyers. She was there with a fabulously huge booth and um with some of the purchases she was giving away these gorgeous yellow bags yellow if you follow her along uh, over on instagram or follow along with her rather english words um you will know that she's a very big fan of the yellow a very big fan of the gold and therefore it seemed entirely appropriate that along with the yellow tote bag i also picked up a customary skein of this beautiful gold from her stall. Now, this is a base that she's been talking about. Let me just get the camera to focus. Uh, over on Instagram, you may well have seen it. This is a collaboration that she's doing with uh, Rosa Pomar, who has the Mondim uh, base, which if I spin it round, you'll be able to see her logo here. Um, she makes the most fabulous, it is non-superwash sock wool, Honestly, I would say this may even knit up at a sport weight. It is a beautiful, slightly, I think the word is kind of toothy wool. It's definitely not sort of merino soft, but at the same time, it's definitely not scratchy to my mind anyway. It's just got a little bit of kind of crunch and squish to it. It's stunning. And of course, this is in her Yellow Brick Road Graffiti colorway, which is the perfect speckly, speckly gold. And I couldn't resist. So it is a fingering weight to a sport weight. You get 421 yards per 100 grams. It's non-superwash wool. Um, it could be used for socks. It could be used for just about anything, but it is absolutely stunning. So we've got a skein of that. I wanted to be sure that I was bringing you something from Edinburgh, my hometown itself, and um, lucky for me, there is a fabulous yarn dyeing company called Rainbow Heirloom, and these guys are based in Edinburgh. Um, they hand dye all of their yarn there, and this is the most stunningly beautiful um, burgundy purple colourway. Let me hold it up on the screen. So here you are, you can see it, it is fabulously beautiful. There are, oh, there's a little bit of rogue fluff on there. Ignore the rogue fluff. Ah, there we go. Um, this is the most beautiful, slightly variegated tonal red um, purple color. It is gorgeously soft. This is 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. It is 437 yards, 200 meters, which is 400 meters. It is a fingering weight, and it is their lush light base in the Princess Rockstar colorway, 
which is a fabulous name for a colourway if I do say so myself. So um, yes, you've got this beautiful, soft, luxurious base to go alongside it. And um, yeah, I couldn't resist it. It's such a fabulous colour. But um, these guys had some really beautiful sort of tonal solids in their um, various different colourways and sort of beautiful rainbow colourways. So a great option for solids here as well. So a skein of this is coming your way. So one of the absolute just visual delights and highlights of EYF itself was the Countess Ablaze booth. Countess Ablaze is a dyer based in the UK. She dyes in Manchester and um, she has um, a vast array of stunning colours and yarn lines. She's very tongue-in-cheek. She's a little bit on the risque side of knitting, which if you appreciate the podcast, I like to think that as Venn diagrams go, there is a good strong overlap going on there. She is also the fabulous individual behind the Tits Out Collective, which you may have heard us talk about last year on some of the other podcasts that are around there. Um, it was a fantastic charity initiative and uh, she very much pioneered and led some of the charge behind that. So um, I wanted to make sure I stopped by her booth. I picked up a couple of things and one of the things that I could not resist is this skein of absolute beauty. I mean, if you know me and you know my jewel tones, obnoxious coral notwithstanding, this is right up my alley. This is her Gulliver's Travels. It's her Lady Persephone sock yarn in the Gulliver's Travels colourway. It is a fabulous sock yarn, so it's 75% blue face Leicester, 25% nylon, uh, which is of course a fingering weight, and it is this incredibly stunning, let me just focus, variegated, deep teals, deep emeralds. I mean, it has it all. And um, it's, ah, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, again, this is very much a kind of good option for socks. It's incredibly sturdy. It's not as soft as merino, but at the same time, it will wear like absolute iron. So um, yeah, there we go, back in the room. Um, so yes, this is a fabulous gain that I was delighted to pick up. I do think if you wanted to, bearing in mind they're all fingering weight, these three, they do kind of look amazing together. They wouldn't have to go together, you wouldn't have to feel compelled to use them together, but they are rather lovely. So um, yes, three skeins of fingering weight, a little bit more yarn still to come. But before I dig into that yarn, let's talk a little bit about Riotous Colour, because while in EYF, I had to stop by the wonderful booth of Little Grey Girl. You've heard me talk about her before. I have a number of Gemma's Projects bags and um, this one I really could not resist. It is a riot of colour. It has some fabulous gold, some fabulous speckles with gold. Look at that! In here and um, I couldn't resist. It's absolutely beautiful. So we've got Gemma's tag here. She is the Little Grey Girl. She is based in London and um, her project bags are incredibly well made. They don't have sort of too much interfacing in them. They squish down really nicely. I use mine for commuting and traveling a lot on the basis that it squishes down really well. And this fabulous geometric print, um, I couldn't resist. So um, yeah, you get a great skein, uh, a great skein, a great project bag from Gemma as well. Another vendor that I always stop by as and when I can at most of the UK events is the fabulous Julie of Tilly Flop. Julie is a wonderful individual. I love stopping by and chatting with her. She's a graphic designer by trade with a keen interest in knitting and um, produces some of the most fabulously funny cards that are knitting related. She also has tea towels, she has prints. She is definitely worth checking out if you're in the market for a few excellent knitting cards. One of the ones I couldn't possibly possibly pass by was this fabulous postcard which I think is something we all aspire to but um me in particular it's probably worth saying so yeah you've got a great postcard here from Julie as well as one of my favorite cards of hers which is still in the cellophane but let me hold it so you can hopefully see it here we go exactly I mean Julia's humour is right up my street. She has a number of cards that definitely speak to me, but um, yeah, I love 
her work and everything that she does. So I'm delighted to have included a couple of goodies from her as well. While we're talking about graphic design, we were lucky enough to be treated to a fabulous pop-up stand from the incredibly talented Katie Green. Now, Katie Green is an illustrator. She has the Green Bean podcast, which you should definitely watch. Um, she's based down in Devon, I believe, in the southwest of England. She has a gorgeous little puppy called Jack, who is just scampers and get up, gets up to all sorts of uh, amazing nonsense on their walks through Dartmoor. She is such a wonderful, wonderful talent. And um, she's produced a number of books and magazines over years. If you recognise her style of illustration, you may well have seen it used in Pom Pom magazine. I know that Katie of uh, the Inside Number 23 podcast, Miss Lavelli, has talked about Katie's book previously as well. She has a fabulous illustrated, well, graphic novel called Lighter Than My Shadow, which is all about her struggles and coping with an eating disorder in the past as well. And um, she had a number of different uh, sort of artworks projects available in the pop-up stand in the marquee on some of the days and so I picked up this little um, drawings here about knitting and so it's got a couple of uh, sort of illustrations, little comic strips, some responses and thoughts that she has around knitting and how she feels about it and so I wanted to make sure I included that here because I love watching Katie's podcast. It's beautifully calm and so creative in such a different way but still so closely linked to knitting. Um, really would recommend you watching it but um yes definitely uh worth checking out her work both in the e-zines and uh both in the the physical zines rather and um over on her podcast too We've got a couple of little badges so I picked up a fabulous badge from the La Bien Aimé stall there you go with their signature logo and their beautiful little sheep um, I stopped by the Knitting Goddess book booth and um, picked up a fabulous pin, which definitely speaks to me at the moment, which is a no, I won't just stick to my knitting, obviously. With a number of the com um, discussions we've got around the community around racism, diversity, intersectionality going on at the moment, um, I very much agree with and uh, want to ensure that I'm promoting the sentiment that comes with that button as well. And um, in terms of topics that we've talked about in the podcast, things that have come up on the podcast, I couldn't resist this little guy. This is a little bit more on the flippant side, but with the blame done to knit along, one of the first patterns we talked about was the catdigan, the sinister catdigan, uh, which um, Rebecca of uh, Yarn Song over on Instagram recommended as one of the patterns she wanted to work on. We had a number of sinister catdigans that were completed as part of the blame done to knit along, so I felt it only appropriate that we have this little stitch marker guy to come along and um, represent that in our prize. So a um, little sinister catdigan from Anne Cattenbeig as well. And then last but by no means least, a little extra yarn. As if it wasn't yarny enough already, I stopped by the Ovis etc booth and um, fell in love with a number of their gorgeous woolly wools. They are um, incredibly renowned for hand dyeing, some beautiful colourways and some bases that are perhaps a little bit non-traditional if you like as far as hand dyeing goes. So um, in particular one of the kits that caught my eye, and it is a little kit, is um, I have followed Becky of Soprano Knits for a little while now. She has a fabulous podcast. She is an opera singer based in Germany who also does the most incredible series of designs. Um, she designed a pair of mittens based on a long-standing friendship that she had um, with uh, a friend of hers back in the US. They were called the Doris Mitts. It is the absolutely charming, charming story that she tells over on her podcast. But they are these beautiful little um, fingerless mitts with some fabulous colour work on the back of them as well. And so I couldn't resist picking up a Doris Mitts kit from Ovis etc. And this is Shetland fingering. It is 100% Shetland wool. Um, you get a 50 gram skein, which is 200 meters, and these little assorted minis to be able to complete Becky's pattern. Um, in theory, you could use them for something else, but to be honest, the pattern is so beautiful, um, I'd highly recommend you checking it out and potentially using these for that. So um, that will be going into the prize as well. So hopefully, 
It's a fair representation of some of the things that were available at Edinburgh. I'd love to have chosen more, but I do think this is a strong kind of representation of some of the different vendors and goodies that were there. And um, I hope you're as excited as I am at having an opportunity to squish it for yourselves. And so, as I say, um, the prize thread will be open until next Sunday evening. That is Sunday the 14th of April. I cannot believe we're in April already. But um, yes, and uh, so I look forward to um, picking a winner at random from there. Now, there is a bit more of this vlog still to go. I know you're thinking, Caroline, Jesus Christ, this has gone on long enough, enough with the Edinburgh chat. But um, yeah, no, it's it just I'm just gonna keep on giving. You can switch off now. You're more than welcome to. You might have switched off already. I don't know. But um, what I do want to do is I was actually up in Edinburgh for a little bit longer. I stayed beyond the end of the festival. It was my mum's birthday on the Monday, and so we had a wonderful time. As I've mentioned in the past, Edinburgh was my hometown. It's where I grew up. Um. Certainly during my teenage years, I went to high school there before I moved down south to go to university. And so to go back and revisit it, to reconnect with places that I knew so well for such a large time in my life, um, was really, really wonderful. And so I spent a lot of the time on the Sunday and the Monday wandering around some of those old haunts, capturing a little bit of footage. And so if you want to get to know Edinburgh a little bit better, if you want to see places that are perhaps a little off the beaten track, if you want to see some of the really big, big attractions attractions, um, perhaps from a slightly different angle, please do feel free to continue watching. I'm going to share a little bit about um, in and around the old town. I'm going to head out to the south side and morning side where I, where I grew up. And then there's going to be a lovely little wander along the water of Leith towards the end in through the castle um, before the end of my trip. And so if you want to stay tuned for that, feel free. If you want to come back to it later, feel equally free. If you want nothing to do with it ever again and you were only here for the shiny stuff, feel free. <laughs> Either way, embrace it, grab yourself a cuppa, and uh, I might well see you on the other side. Bye pickles!
hoping we might be able to hear me over the wind, but let's be honest, this is Scotland, and the wind, it is consistent, if nothing else. So I'm having a lovely day at the one, wandering around some of my old haunts, wandering in and around the Royal Mile, and taking you along with me. So some of the area here, where I'm standing in some of the cloisters, this is the area in behind St Giles Cathedral on the Royal Mile, and St Giles has a very special place in my heart, for a number of reasons. This happens to be the cathedral where the school that I was part of when I was in high school, we did a lot of Christmas services and one of the highlights of the year was always coming here and seeing Christmas carols and it was very much the start of the whole festive season. And so yeah, wandering around, bringing back lots of memories. I also spent a lot of time working here during my summers in the um, summer holidays so when I was at university I would come here and work during the festival and ended up working on the Royal Mile looking after some of the performers and the street artists and um, it was a lot of fun. Always bells, always bells.
So if we can ignore for a second how hideously out of puff I am, it's been a while since I lived in Scotland. There are more hills than I remember. <laughs> no, there aren't, there really genuinely aren't. I remember there being exactly this many hills. I just remember being a lot younger and a lot fitter. But um, here you have possibly my favorite view in the whole of Edinburgh. Now, the background noise is a bit disappointing. This used to be a university campus. It is now being changed into a development of flats. Don't get me wrong, they'll be beautiful. They'll have a stunning view, as you can tell. But um, yeah, this was this was a favorite haunt of mine just a few minutes from my house. And um, I mean, you can probably see why. So as you may be aware, um, every New Year's Eve, Hogman 8, as it is in Scotland, we have a massive fireworks display. Everything kicks off from the castle and there are fireworks around the seven hills across of Edinburgh. This is where I always used to come and watch the fireworks and it was amazing. And uh, yeah, it's all just feeling very nostalgic coming back up here. Round about, let me see, here somewhere. Here you might be able to see a little white tower. That's my old school, um, which is what passed my old house. It's all very nostalgic and coming back to me. But um, yeah, what's not coming back to me? My breath. So um, I'm gonna leave it there. 